do want to ask you, you sit on the Financial Services Committee, so I want to ask you about another crisis in this country, and that is the fact that there is no agreement yet on what to do and how to raise the debt ceiling. You've endorsed Donald Trump for president. I want to play for people what he said at CNN's town hall this week about the debt ceiling and defaulting, followed by J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon reacting. Listen. You might as well do it now because you'll do it later because we have to save this country. Our country is dying. The U.S. defaulting would be massively consequential well, you don't know. for it's, everyone it's, in this room, for all of You don't know. It's psychological. It's really psychological more than anything else. And it could be very bad. It could be maybe nothing. One more thing he doesn't know very much about. Uh, let me put it in two categories. One is actual default. That is potentially catastrophic. You would agree that a default is catastrophic for our economy, right? I would completely agree. And the, the, the value system here in Washington, D.C., has always recognized that. And President Trump did. President Biden is the first modern-day president. That's not what he said, respectfully, Congressman. He I, said I it, disagree with Donald Trump. Do you want me to say that? I disagree with Donald Trump. He knows better. But when he was president, he negotiated to make sure that it was signed and done and gave the Democrats overwhelmingly $300 billion a year more to spend. And so he did negotiate. He was successful in that. We need that same kind of statesmanship now. Mm, we really appreciate you being on. You're a key voice in... Uh, both of these issues. Congressman, come back. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Yes, ma'am. We're joined by Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. He's a member of the House Judiciary Committee. He's also a candidate for the United States Senate from California right now. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us with just a few weeks until a potential, God forbid, default of the nation's debt. How concerned are you to hear tomorrow's planned meeting between President Biden and the congressional leadership has now been pushed back? Well, I'm mostly concerned with the Republicans' the continued insistence that they will default on the debt if they don't get the draconian budget that they want. Uh, they were more than content to have the debt ceiling raised uh, while Trump was president. They weren't threatening to derail uh, the economy at that time. But now they want to use this as a big bludgeon. Uh, and their continued insistence on that uh, really threatens, you know, from the perspective of Californians, the Social Security checks for about 6 million Californians their budget alone would threaten millions of visits to the VA in California by veterans. Uh, so they're basically saying, pick your poison. We can cut veterans' benefits. Uh, we could cut uh, food for people who are hungry. Or we're going to take the economy over the cliff and cost the Californians and people around the country about 20000 of their retirement savings. Should Speaker McCarthy keep the House in session until this crisis is averted? And should President Biden skip the G7 summit in Japan? Well, I think what McCarthy ought to do is schedule a vote on a clean debt ceiling bill. Uh, Democrats will support it. He can vote against it if he wants. I think there are enough reasonable, rational, uh, you know, at least a dozen Republicans who will support that rather than go over the cliff. So we don't really need to keep the Congress in session. We just need to be able to vote. He should schedule a vote on a clean debt ceiling, uh, and that would resolve that. And, have, and separately, we'll debate the budget. Uh, if he wants to shut down the government later over the budget, you know, he's done that before. Republicans have done that before. I think it's a disaster for the country, but we shouldn't even flirt with uh, defaulting on our debt. Absolutely. Uh, that would be a disaster for the country, indeed. Uh, turning to the end of what's called Title 42, Congressman, the Biden administration has known for two years that this policy would eventually end. So why are they just now scrambling to implement new measures to deal with this surge? Well, yeah, there was some uncertainty in the courts about when it would come to an end. Uh, now, I favored it coming to an end. But uh, but I think that, you know, what they're trying to do in surging, uh, our, you know, surging uh, folks from the Guard to the border to help with ministerial tasks, not with law enforcement, will provide additional resources. Uh, we're also going to have to surge resources to some of these communities along the border that for a long time uh, have been... Uh, you know, making their shelter and food and other humanitarian uh, supplies available to migrants. Uh, these communities also need help. Uh, and we ought to be treating these migrants, uh, you know, with, uh, with I think, warm hearts uh, because of what they've gone through to get there. I don't think we should be treating them like criminals. 
Uh, so it's a big task. It was, uh, it's been big for the last couple administrations. Uh, but what we need most of all is a comprehensive approach to our immigration policy that reflects the values of the country. Uh, and that we've been pushing uh, as Democrats for a long time, but we haven't found a willing partner in the GOP. House Republicans did uh, just pass a border security bill that would restart construction of the border wall and reinstate Trump's remain in Mexico policy. Does that speak to just how far apart each party is right now in addressing uh, the clearly broken immigration system? It really does. I mean, we've come a long way since George W. Bush was president when he supported a comprehensive immigration uh, solution uh, to now where, you know, in the GOP, they view essentially a crisis at the border as a political gift that never stops giving to them. Uh, so they haven't shown any interest in really solving this. Uh, their border plan would just go back to the Trump era of trying to build a wall, uh, trying to separate uh, kids from their families, trying to turn people who are fleeing to this country because it's unsafe for them at home into criminals. Uh, this is certainly not the answer, but it's the only answer they've been giving now for years. Uh, I do wish there was some good faith uh, like there was back in the days of George W. Bush and a realization that the system is broken. It's going to take both parties to fix it. Um, and, uh, and I do think Democrats, when we control both houses and the presidency, need to invest the political capital to get this done as well. But, uh, but right now, as the, as the government is divided, it'll take both parties to fix this. Congressman Adam Schiff, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.